Hello there, my name is Warren and welcome back. Today I have another Apex commentary for you. It's in uh, a gold rank this time, so we've been, uh, the friends and I have been playing pretty uh, pretty consistently and been ranking up, so we got all the way up to gold and we have a really nice game here for you. But before I get to that, I just wanted to thank everyone for that's been been watching the videos and you know whether it's the, the full videos like these or whether it's the clips. Uh, we uh, surpassed 50 subscribers the other day, which is just insane how fast the channel seems to be. Um, uh, growing at least it's it seems impressive to me so I just want to thank everyone that you know that subscribed that watches the videos that likes the comments uh, I really appreciate all that uh, okay let's get into the video so pretty early on you'll see that uh, we get into a fight um, with the team here they're kind of just looting after they had already win uh, Gibraltar throws down his very, very much so annoying uh, dome shield. Don't ever push a Gibraltar in his dome shield. Uh, it is just not going to go well. So uh, I talked to my uh, teammates, Spock and Mangoes, and we're just trying to set up and trying to win this fight. Mangoes pulses quickly back here, saying we're being pushed from behind. We're getting naded. Okay, we need to regroup. I give Spock a, uh, a call out that says, hey, there's going to be a crypto dropping on you, which he steadily fires out as he gets knocked pretty quick. I say, uh, no problem, uh, you know, just start crawling your way back and we'll be able to cover you and quickly get the res. As I am lifeline, it helps, you can get it a lot faster. So I keep Gibraltar from pushing, I back him back down again, Mangoes backs Crypto down again, and now we're just gonna, I'm just going for a quick res. I get to him just in time as the Crypto wants to thirst. And then the Crypto decides to just throw his life away and go for the finish, which... I just don't understand that move because he takes a fight that was a 3v3 and turns it into a 2 or a th excuse me a 3v2 and turns it into a 2v2 so I do not understand that play at all so now uh, again mangoes and I are just in a duel with that same team that we were fighting over there at that old res station uh, so again, it's just trying to get past this team so that we can go on res our teammate. I'm pinging boxes for Mangoes so that he can go and get armor, but as you can see, this team that we're fighting over there, they have us pinned down, right? It's fairly difficult for us to move forward without risking taking a ton of damage. I have a general idea of where both parties are. I have someone behind that box, behind that crate, that's using it as a head glitch. Um, and then I have a person to that left behind that rock, so I know where they are. Um, Gibraltar pushes here because he needs to get Crypto's banner. Uh, you know that we always joke in our in our party when we miss that many shots. It's uh, shots on target, is what we say. So Gibraltar decides to full send towards his teammate banner. Not sure if he gets it, but I call it out to Mangoes, and we quickly get that knock. So now we're in a really good position. So. Mangoes decides, hey, let's push up. We already got Gibraltar down. Let's just push this. It's like an Octane or a Watson. Um, Mangoes cleans them up pretty quick with the alternator. And I just go for the uh, finisher on the Gibraltar to get some of my armor back. So now I ask uh, Lieutenant Spock, and he'll do it here in a second, to ping the nearest uh, respawn beacon. Because we have dealt with all the current threats that are in front of us. And now we can purely focus on getting our friend Spock back. So he pings that for us, and we start huffing it over to it. A tip, if you have two people alive that are going for a res, one person can go for the res because they have to just stand there, they're completely stationary. The other individuals should open up any of the supply crates, the looting crates, if they're lifeline, you saw I called in a care package. Do anything that you can for your teammate who's getting respawned to loot as fast as possible because a, uh, a dropship, right, that's coming in with a with a res or whatever, is basically a giant beacon in the sky for other teams that says, hey, let's go push these guys because one person's going to be weak. So anything that you can do to help speed up the looting process for your teammate is going to be beneficial to get them back into fighting shape as quickly as possible. So a uh, little while later, I see there's a team at Octane, and you'll notice this route that I'm taking. If you're going to push an Octane's place, this route, it can be very, very helpful because you get a large amount of height over top of them and you have a decent amount of cover because you can either go left to right or you can go backwards. Um, and it's difficult for them to shoot over that mountain. So I'm uh, just taking some pop shots. My shots weren't too great with the charge rifle um, at Octane's place and my teammates really aren't necessarily too close. So I'm not interested in, in doing any kind of hardcore push, just taking some pop shots at them. 
um, we see that they are rotating. Uh, they're not going to push. They are rotating completely, and they're just going to go to airbase. So they have no interest in fighting us at all. So we're like, okay, no problem. Let's play. Let's work on getting a better position. So we get to the section on the hill, uh, height is always your best option, and at this point we're trying to listen, we're trying to look around, as because we know there's a team in airbase, but that's it, that's the only intel we have. So we're trying to figure out where teams are. Right as, I, right as I say that, you have, we see two teams fighting, we have one team that has the height advantage on that, uh, you know, those walls on, on the start to airbase, and then they're fighting down a team to their, uh, below them. So. Obviously, the team on the wall is the easier shot. We start shooting at them. We actually deal some decent amount of damage, but they back down again, which is no problem. That's the smart move. So again, we're just going, let's reposition because we don't want them to always know where we are. We want to move so that the enemy always has to relocate us. So we're again, we're playing the positioning game. Let's move around. Let's find a different spot of attack and find a better place to shoot at them, or at least a new place that they won't be expecting. So Mangoes gives you a call out that says, hey, we have people over near Bunker. Uh, we have this uh, Bloodhound that is struggling to get up the wall. We have all certainly been there. And, uh, <laughs> and, and they're fighting another team. So we have to remember that we do have this team behind us at airbase, but it seems like they're just kind of sit back there. Um, so we can give our focus at Bunker, but always have that in the back of your mind of where are the enemy teams and, you know, how much time do I have to spend you know, into like, can I can I engage this team for this for long enough that this fight is going to take without that other team catching on and pushing me from behind? So, uh, always try to remember where the enemy is and how much distance is between you and their last known position w before you engage in fights that are going to be drawn out. So this team really doesn't have any interest in fighting us, which I don't blame them. Uh, they're kind of in a in a tough spot in bunker. They have to push out because the, the storm is kind of right on their heels. So we take a couple pop shots at them, but they are not really our focus right now. We don't want to push them, right? We don't want to push against the storm and give up our position uh, with that other team at our back. We have some height here with all these buildings. We have cover. We don't necessarily want to be giving that up and push towards bunker and, and then have to re reclaim the ground that we already gained. So again, Mango says, hey, there's a, there's a care package out here. Maybe we can get something good. So we go, we run over to the care package um, with Bunker at our back. So now we know two things. We know there's a team at Bunker. We know there's a team at Airbase. So sitting, getting that care package is, is fine. It's, you know, it's always a good idea to see what you can get. But I, I point out that, hey, we need to get height advantage. I ping it a couple times um, because just like we were staying in the towers over there, we want to be doing the same thing. Uh, I didn't know that there was an overclip there, so my door climb uh, didn't really work. You'll notice, uh, like I was making, giving us saying that Bloodhound, uh, we've all been there trying to climb the mountain. That was me trying to climb this building. So now we have a ton of intel. We have this team in front of us, which is on the outside of airbase. Could be that same team from airbase. It's it's tough to tell. We have that team over there, and I'm not sure what that area is, but they're over to our right, kind of near those huge uh, tanks. And then we have that team that was behind us in in bunker so those are all three of the other teams because there's four squads remaining which you can see at the top left we are obviously one of them uh and and so now we we have a, a last known position for all teams and we're in a pretty decent spot yes we're kind of in the middle but it's almost a triangle so we're, we're pushed back a little bit so that's okay the team from where that air tanks is decides to push that other team in airbase. We had no desire to push that at all. We should you do not want to give up a strong position on the edge of the circle in you know inside it outside of the storm just to fish a kill. Uh, we Mangoes gives a call out. We found that team that was behind us in bunker. They're now riding that edge of that circle up to where that giant air tank place is. So we now have absolutely every team you know, kind of in front of us, almost on a curve, but they are still in front of us. So we have positioning on every single one. We don't immediately shoot at this Revenant because we don't think that he knows where we are. It's possible that he does, but judging by his position, it doesn't necessarily make sense that he knows where we are. 
and we don't want to give up we don't we don't want to be the first to shoot with only three squads left so the team that beat that other team at airbase they rotate over to now fight this new team um, in places where they were so they don't see us or they just ignored us but they choose to fight each other because we weren't shooting and making ourselves a target this late in the game you don't want to be the first to engage in the fight because you're forcing yourself to be weak so we're just taking pop shots we're trying to make people weak it's always best if you look at my ammo counter there at the bottom for ammo in my charge rifle I have plenty of ammo to spare um, and it is much better to make the enemy waste healing resources than for you to waste ammo, right? If, if you watched my last video, I talk about a little bit about looting and when it's important to loot, when looting helps you and when, when looting doesn't help you. Um, same thing goes for resource management. Uh, there is no reason for, in the last fight of the game for me to hold on to 52 shots of charge rifle ammo. What's the point? After we win the game, it's not like I can do anything with it. So burn it out. Use as much as you need to because I guarantee you that a person has a lot less healing items in their inventory than they do ammo. So healing items are worth more than ammo. So now we need to find a new place to position, right? Because our current position is not in the circle. So you'll see here in a little bit, Mangoes is down there. He's scouting ahead trying to figure out um, you know, where, where's a good spot and you'll see a, a couple pings come in from me, from Mangoes, from Spock and what we're basically, I'll point it out when it happens, but what we're basically doing is you can't hear the comms, but we're discussing different points along this line of where we think we should move to because the circle is moving now. So we picked an, an, an unlucky time to have to uh, move the other team, put a pretty uh, pretty effective airstrike down to try to, I'm not sure if it was aimed at us or it just kind of, we got the brunt of that inherently, but we uh, managed it pretty well. We're able to take no damage. And again, we still have everybody in front of us. So again, we're just trying to pick off the kills where we can. We're still at full strength. Um, we have a person pushing left. I make a quick call out and say, Mango Spock, you have somebody pushing out to your left. Uh, you need to deal with that fight. So both of them climb up on the rock, uh, take a little bit of damage, but he is dealt with pretty quick. Unsure whether if he knew we were there or not. Um, so he, he and, and Mangos had the peacekeeper, so that was a, a, a pretty easy finish right there. So a couple things here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it here. So the first thing that I did is I called in a lifeline package. Now, the only reason I'm not interested, not really in anything that's in this lifeline package. The only reason I'm doing it is because where I put it is out in a completely open area. You saw that I jumped down there. There's nothing in front of me that's going to give me cover. So I'm trying to create cover. So whether you're Rampart, whether you're Lifeline, um, uh, Watson, or even Caustic with his traps, like whatever, you wanna be placing things in open areas that give that you can use later as cover. So that's the reason I call down Lifeline's ult. I'm not interested in any of the loot that's actually in it. So we noticed that the people are down up there. So I don't want them being rezzed or getting or a self res or anything like that. So I call out to my teammates, hey, let's put fire on this location, put fire on this location. Spock hits it with a really nice arc star. I say there's one more, keep shooting, and we're able to get these thirsts. If you can finish people off so you just don't have to worry about them, you're much better off. So there's still three squads left. Uh, Mangoes is shooting at the last person uh, and finishes off pretty quick. So now it's us versus one other squad. And this is where it gets uh, interesting because what this person did, and here let me rewind it a little bit if you didn't catch it. But what this person did is he sends out a decoy while Mangoes is, Mangoes is finishing up a kill. And see that decoy, I'll put an arrow on the screen. There's a decoy heading to where to where Mangoes is shooting. And see, I shoot it, so I'm like, oh, okay, it's a decoy. Well, that was a mistake by that Mirage because that Mirage knows where we are. We're shooting, we've been fighting that team. He knows our location. We didn't know where he was. But by him sending out that decoy, it's simple geometry. <laughs> What's the line that that decoy came from? That's where that mirage is. Now, I'm not saying that a 1v3, you know, that he was going to win that fight. 1v3s are rare, but they are doable. 
they're not impossible, a little tougher in the late game, but his best option was to use the storm to his advantage and try to get us stuck in a storm, maybe we make a mistake in positioning or something like that. But he sends out a decoy, all it does is give away his position. So we pull the line back to where he came from, Mangos and I now have a general location of where he is, you'll see that I ping it, and now it's just a head hunt. And what do you know? He is exactly where we thought he was, exactly where I put that ping. And I drew that just based off of the decoy that he sent out. He gave away his position. So, when you're playing certain heroes, just because you have certain skills that might be, you know, or abilities that are helpful when you're in the kind of the middle, uh, early middle game, or even in the late game, doesn't mean you should always be using those abilities all the time. Sometimes they can come back and hurt you, in which case we were able to find out where that Mirage was solely based off of because he used his ability. If he didn't use it, we may have been hunting around for a while. Now, like I said, the chances of him you know, in a 1v3 is, is somewhat slim, but he, he took out Mangoes there. He knocked Mangoes. So, you know, he was a good shot, so not impossible. So don't give away your position unless you absolutely have to. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, uh, don't forget to uh, you know like the video, comment, all that, all that jazz. Uh, subscribe, and any constructive uh, feedback is is more than welcome in the comments about you know how I did, how it went, and uh, if there's any games that you think I should check out or do a commentary over, uh, put that down in the comments as well. Until next time, be well.